You've said something very interesting about Juneteenth. You said in African-American communities that celebrate it, it represents the birth of a new American freedom that is still obviously tragically incomplete, but it provides us a springboard to have the conversation and a policy impact around racial slavery and the world that black labor actually built in the United States. So it is both a celebration and a commemoration and a reminder that the, the work that was marked uh, on this date in 1865 is not done. Yeah, absolutely right. I think that we are at a watershed moment in American history, um, Ali, and we uh, can't turn back. We have to seize this generational opportunity uh, to end systemic racism. And I think that the Juneteenth um, celebrations here are really remarkable because this starts in Texas, which is now my home state, um, and places like Houston, places like Galveston, places like Austin, uh, African-American women and men bought up land and acres to celebrate, to have barbecues. We did these commemorations uh, during the period of Reconstruction and Redemption, and that redemption is the Redeemer South, the lost cause, the, the Confederacy that really articulated this belief system in white supremacy and utilized racial terror um, and the denial of voting rights and racial segregation to really rob black Americans of dignity and citizenship. The positive to that story is really the resilience of black people and their love and faith in American democracy. And the fact that in 2020, 155 years later, we have so many white allies alongside of Latinx um, and Asian and indigenous uh, and, and trans and lesbian and gay and queer. We have and immigrants. We have all these folks who are in the streets protesting for both black dignity and black citizenship and black equality, but really to remake our country because Juneteenth um, should have been a new birth of American freedom, uh, but we didn't complete that birth uh, because we had white supremacy and racist policies that we still have today in 2020. Um, but I'm hopeful and encouraged by so many different people uh, out there in America protesting over over 2,000 different cities um, for not just social justice and racial justice, but for black dignity, black citizenship, and in the process to remake uh, American democracy. This may just be um, an academic question, but since you're an academic, I'm going to ask you, are these allies who are looking to complete uh, the thing that Juneteenth marks, or is there a new realization across this country amongst all of us, no matter our skin color or economic situation, that uh, we're not a free country? If everybody's not enjoying justice uh, and economic dignity and equality, then none of us are. Yeah, I think it's a, it's both and, Ali. I think that if we look at uh, freedom and liberation as a multiple choice question, uh, it's really all of the above. So you have the, the completion right. of black dignity and citizenship is how we're going to end institutional systemic racism and white supremacy. And that ending racial caste means that people who are Latinx, people who are Asian, people who are um, um, indigenous are going to have citizenship access and without all of us being free, none of us are free. And we're really seeing unprecedented um, solidarity and all politics are local. So people are at the local level, whether in Tulsa or Austin, Texas, where I live or New York City. And they're saying we want to both end racist policies, institutionalize anti-racist policies, but also institutionalize racial justice and equity for all people in all communities. So this is a really uh, transformative time and the fact that we can push Juneteenth to be a federal holiday is important because symbols matter, Ali. When we think about uh, the Confederate uh -huh. flag, when we think about symbols of uh, con Confederate war memorials, uh, those things matter and they become an extension of a society that is rooted in racial slavery, anti-black racism. So if we can end those symbols and at the same time we have these new symbols of, of justice and the kind of America that Dr. King talked about, Martin Luther King Jr. told us about this beloved community that we could create here. He said it was going to take a bitter but beautiful struggle. And that was a community that was free of racial injustice, that was free of hypermaterialism, that was free of violence, and was free of segregation. And people really want that community in 2020. I think the, the best aspect of what's happened uh, out of this tragedy, the tragedy of, of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and so many thousands who've been killed 
by police brutality, by the criminal justice system, by racism, um, is the fact that we're all coming together and we're finally saying we can achieve our country if we end racism, but we also have to acknowledge the past. The only way we can move forward together as a country is by acknowledging the past.